Student friends, welcome to yet another class of modern Indian history. I am your guide in history, Arani Sekya. We are going to have a discussion on commercialization of agriculture. Student friends, you are aware of the fact that commercialization of Indian agriculture had a distinct role to play in colonial economy. At the outset, we would look at the concept of commercialization of agriculture. It is a process where peasants start producing primarily for sale in distant markets rather than for their own consumption or to sell in local markets. So friends, the peasants had the intention to sell their crops rather for their family consumption or the production within the household, they wanted to have a market for their crops. So naturally, they switched from food crops to cash crops. Growing of cash crops instead of food grain is called commercialization of agriculture. Here, we got the idea that following commercialization of agriculture, the peasants started producing for the local market or for the world market rather than for his own family needs. Whatever he needed to for his family expenses, he got that cash in return of the sale of his produce. Beginning of the commercialization of Indian agriculture was related with the foundation and expansion of British rule in India. In the Indian context, agriculture got a commercial orientation during the British rule. It was seen particularly from the second half of the 19th century. Various economic forces followed by the British led to the rapid transformation of India's economy into a colonial economy. So in the following slides, we will look at the various economic policies that forced, that compelled the Indian farmers to get this transformation called commercialization of agriculture. Factors leading to commercialization of agriculture were, first of all, we should consider the opening of the Suez Canal. It was in the year 1869 and the opening of Suez Canal cut the sea route between India and England by over 3000 miles. That means it definitely lessened the distance between the colony and the colonial power. The cut, the opening of Suez Canal further shortened the period of journey between Calcutta and London by 36 days. It reduced transportation cost by half. So apart from lessening the distance, the time period needed to cover the journey, the opening of Suez Canal further reduced the transportation cost by half. In the meantime, the American Civil War that broke out during 1864-65, the American Civil War transferred the British demand for cotton from America to India. As a result of which, exports of cotton from India at once jumped from different parts of India. Here we see how the American Civil War forced the British to look for an alternative source of cotton because by the 19th century Great Britain was coming up as an industrial power because of the industrial revolution they had textile industries and to run the textile industries what they needed was the raw material the raw material, the cotton that they had so far imported from America was now to be replaced by the imports from India. Therefore, 
cotton from different parts of India had now demand, had now the market demand. And following the American Civil War, the demand from Indian cotton jumped up. Another factors, another important factor was the introduction of money economy. Yes, the peasants had to pay their land revenue in cash. Following the introduction of cash revenue demand, the Indian peasants who had so long so far been paying their revenue in kind were now forced to pay the cash to their immediate landlord or to the government authority. So the Indian peasants had to pay the land revenue in cash and in order to pay the revenue they needed what? They needed the money. How they could earn the money? He had to find money by the sale of his product. The Indian farmer needed a market to sell the crops. It was sold by the exports to England. By offering higher prices, the Indian peasants were attracted to grow high priced crops for the foreign market. So here we see the two way benefit. First, the British needed raw materials from India and the Indian peasants on the other hand, because of the colonial policy, they needed cash. They could earn cash only when they could produce for the market. They had the crops which had the market demand only when the crops had the export value and therefore in order to serve their own interest the Indian peasants rather served the colonial interest and by offering higher prices to the Indian peasants the British forces attracted to grow high price crops for the foreign market. The process of commercialization of Indian agriculture did not happen in a single day. It took long period. The British industrialists were always in need of raw materials to keep their factories running. By this time, we have come to the fact that British power was dependent to its colonies to run their own industries. In case of India, they, they located some distinct places of India for certain crops. For example, cotton was produced in the Deccan, indigo and jute in Bengal, sugarcane in the United Provinces, tea in Assam and coffee in Madras. Dear students, apart from these valuable commercial crops, cotton, indigo, jute, sugarcane, tea and coffee, there were other crops that had market demand. For example, rubber, the spices, the Indian spices had great commercial value. In this map, I have tried to give you an idea of the different centers of cash crops during British India. So, here from the central provinces, we see the cultivation and export of sugarcane. Then cotton was mainly cultivated in the Deccan region. Then it was from Bengal that the British got their supply of jute. Assam and the eastern India was famous for the tea, tea cultivation. And from the Madras in the further south of the India, in the Madras region, there was extensive coffee cultivation. And from the northwest frontiers of India, in specifically from the Punjab region, there was the export of wheat. So from different parts of India, we see how sugarcane, cotton, jute, tea, coffee, wheat supplied, served rather, served the British interest during the colonial period. 
the process of commercialization of agriculture was very much supported by the transport and communication system the transport system provided impetus to commercialization of agriculture because it helped quick transportation the quick transportation from the crops from the field helped the farmers to reach the centers of export in a short period of time the railways in india were rapidly expanding the rail route increased from 432 miles in the year 1859 to 1990 miles in the year 1881 and to 25363 miles in the year 1901 so here we see how there was rapid extension of the british indian railways from 1859 to 1901 in a short span less than 50 years it rose from 432 miles to 25363 miles friends you are aware of the fact that railway started operating in india only from the year 1853 that was from bombay to thane and following that in order to serve the british interest apart from their administrative interest it was also because of the economic interest rather to facilitate Uh, facilitated the uh, commercialization of agriculture they invested on the indian railways here in the graph you can see how there was extension of railways in british india the process of commercialization was also supported by the rapid road extension before the railways we needed before the railways it was the roadways that supported the foundation and extension of british empire in india the british government undertook road construction connecting important trade centers of india bombay was connected to agra in the year 1840 and by 1853 the grand trunk road had been extended from banaras to delhi again i am taking help of the map to make you understand easily how the long distance from bombay to agra was covered by the grand trunk road and again from the banaras to delhi it was the road connectivity that helped the easy collection and transportation of the crops from the field to the industry there are different observations on commercialization of agriculture there are different schools of thought on the causes character of the indian commercialization of agriculture first we will look at the nationalist school of thought nationalist historiography view commercialization of indian agriculture as forced and artificial this school of thought considers that high revenue demand in cash compel the cultivators to sell their produce it means that because of the demand of their revenue the poor peasants were compelled to produce those crops which had market value therefore they switched over from food crops to commercial crops moving to the imperialist school of historiography we see they considers commercialization of agriculture as natural one that means the peasants were attracted to the market force they consider that market force attracted the indian farmers into the business of production for the market the rising agricultural prices was an indication of the growing prosperity of the peasants on the other hand the marxist historiography looks at the commercialization of agriculture in an 
yet another way uh, way they considered that commercialization of ag- indian agriculture was the by product of imperialist intention imperialist interest in india agricultural production in india was determined by the interest of imperialism this british economic interest their selfish economic interest had broke down the self sufficient village economy so the marxist school of thought considers that indian self sufficiency the the basic character of indian economy the village the self sufficient village is were now depending on to the market it broke their self sufficiency and it was the way towards poverty so here we can conclude our discussion on commercialization of agriculture i hope you have got a fair idea on the concept of commercialization of agriculture the factors leading to commercialization of agriculture the circumstances that compelled indian agricultural indian peasants to switch over to commercialization and the impact that it had on the indian society i hope that you will have a better idea of the concept if you go for further reading here i suggest you to go through the cambridge economic history of india by dharma kumar and tapan rai choudhury indian economy under early british rule by irfan habib essays in modern indian economic history by sabachasi vatacharya and the economic history of india by tithankar roy here are i have given this few titles but i am sure after going through this the relevant chapters of these titles you will have a thorough understanding of this very crucial very important phenomena of modern indian history the commercialization of indian agriculture had a great role to play in shaping british indian economy thank you for your patient participation